What's up, ladies, boys, and girls? It's me, Euchre, back at it again for some good quality narration content. This time we'll be doing a little bit of a beginner tutorial for S, all courtesy of Monarch. S is a well-rounded character with a variety of tools at her disposal. She has a slight emphasis towards zoning, but is also known for her oppressive neutral control and crest set play. She isn't without her flaws, though. While her buttons are large, the recovery and lack of safe gatling options afterwards means she has quite a few places where she's left vulnerable. Consider this alongside her below average health, and you have to be especially careful about choosing when and where to commit, as a single mistake can be costly. Boasting a large horizontal and vertical hitbox, 6B lives in infamy as one of the best anti-airs in the game. Being jump cancelable on hit, you can buffer jump to easily react to counter hit situations and net damaging conversions that also offer full screen carry. Its only real weaknesses are its long recovery and that there isn't really any way to keep yourself safe on block if used against a grounded opponent. Since 6B can't gatling into any other button, you'll have to play rock paper scissors with a special move in an effort to keep yourself safe. A fast forward swipe with excellent reach, 5C stands out as S's strongest mid-range tool. While it is a strong poke, the reward can be a little inconsistent without bores when it comes to max range confirms. If you land a counter hit though, you can make up for this by air dashing JC to continue the combo, even from max distance. With Boars active, the reward is much stronger, making 5C even more intimidating. Given that it's zero on block, 2A plays a major role in setting up S's stagger pressure. By mixing in micro dashes, tick throws, and gatlings into 5A, the amount of options that S can set up from just this one button makes it an invaluable tool. With a quick start up and surprisingly good reach in both directions, JB is undoubtedly S's best air-to-air, -air, and easily one of the best air-to-airs in the game. The reach is so good, in fact, that you'll often be able to hit grounded opponents from the air if you're spaced correctly. It's easy to convert from, regardless of counter hit state. And if you have the meter to spare, you can even transition into an advanced combo to take the opponent to the corner. JC is a multi-purpose button that primarily serves as a high option in S's mix-up, but it is also used to set up safe jumps too. By canceling into a jump from 5A or even just by itself, JC can be used as an instant overhead. While it offers little reward without bores or meter, establishing the presence of this option is its own reward, as it can make the opponent second guess how to defend against you. Just be careful with using JC while high in the air, or as an instant overhead without meter. You can't cancel it into any other moves on block, so you'll be completely vulnerable until you touch the ground. Neutral is the space where S feels most at home, and depending on your play style, you can approach this in a few different ways. If you prefer to play a more passive neutral and want the opponent to come to you, Brunor is an essential tool for accomplishing this. A Brunor is a quick projectile that covers half screen, while combining both A and B versions will produce a giant fireball that covers full screen very quickly. Harass your opponents with this until they're forced to come to you, where you can then intercept them with her strong anti-air 6B. If you want to take the fight to the opponent though, fireballs can still work to your advantage. B Brunor starts up slowly, but then travels full screen very quickly, so you can launch it, then travel behind it so that it covers your approach. However, if you find that the opponent is remaining airborne to hinder your fireball usage, then you may find use in JB, an air poke with amazing reach on both airborne and grounded opponents. You can use this normal to great effect to get in on the opponent and start your offense. Because of the gaps present in her drive buttons, you'll want to stick to building your offense around her strong stagger pressure game. Since 2A is zero on block, you can apply constant stagger pressure by micro dashing. If they seem intent on challenging you, you can go for frame traps by extending your 2A into buttons like 5A or 2C to fish for a counter hit. If they seem fine with blocking it out, you can try to enforce your throw game, which offers a lot of reward if successful. 
This is also a good time to test drive block strings on the opponent to see how they react. Once you have some information about how the opponent plans on dealing with your strategies, you can adjust them accordingly. Once you've scored a knockdown, it's time to choose your Oki. While S has too many Oki options to go over in this video alone, there is also a video covering these options which you can find in the description of this video. For now, we'll go over the two most common Oki options that can be applied in any situation. The first is simply 3C Boars. It's important to secure Boars when you can, as it enhances S's special attacks, which greatly enhances your damage output and pressure. From this ender, you can catch rolls and no techs with 5C, which you can then convert into an easy combo. If you're in the corner, you can simply 2A meaty to catch rolls too. The other Oki option is JC Safe Jump which involves jumping after a Mordred knockdown and then pressing JC just as you're about to hit the ground. When done correctly, JC will automatically catch rolls and no techs. If the opponent neutral teched and used a reversal, you'll recover in time from JC and block the reversal too. While this Oki option doesn't give you bores, it allows you to stay closer to the opponent to continue your pressure. Experiment to see which option you like best, and don't forget to check out the other options in the description. JD's Crest offers S her strongest Oki options. It allows her to convert her mix-ups into damaging combos while keeping her plus on block if the opponent manages to block correctly. Given its strength, it's important to learn exactly how it functions. The basic requirement is that you need a JD knockdown in the corner, which can be done with 2C, JC, JD. Once JD is placed, the objective is to time your mix-up so that it's covered by JD's explosion a few seconds later. A general way to standardize this timing is by doing 2AA, 5AA, and then immediately going for a high-low mix-up with either JC or 3C. Timing it in this way guarantees that the crest explosion that follows will be delayed enough so that you're still plus on block, but also left with enough time to follow up with a combo on hit. Keep in mind that because you're following a block string, this also makes your options a little more predictable in the eyes of the opponent. Consider experimenting with other timings as well to keep your opponent on their toes. Alright everyone, that's all I've got for you this time. Until Monarch contacts me once more, this is Euchre, signing off. And enjoy your time playing Blaze Blue Central Fiction.